Hello Ratbags, it's Jade once again with a preview of a brand new open world survival game that's currently being developed and it's called Sky. It's set on one of the Scottish islands way 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 up north and it's meant to be a Viking survival game. Now I've been following this for a good few months. The developers shared a bunch of screenshots and progress on his Instagram account and he's been making a little bit of waves on there. But this is the first teaser trailer that they put up on their YouTube channel last night. It's now got a Steam page and it's looking like a viable game that's really enhancing the survival genre. With photo realism and hyper realistic survival this could be a particularly special game if if it can match up to what's already been shown once it's actually been released. So let's go through everything I know about Sky right now, take a look at some of the art, the screenshots and the development of it and talk about what this game might offer. That's a bit different from some of the stuff that's already out there. As well as the basics of single player platforms and what else it's got in store for its release next year. Leave a like, make sure you subscribe for the best in open world and survival games and let's go. So as I said, a lot of this development has been shown off on Instagram over the last few months. And this actually caught my eye via an advertisement on Instagram. So not the most usual way for me to come across games as I'm not often on this website long enough. But it's an upcoming survival game, as it says in the description, in the Viking era on a hyper-realistic 256 square kilometre map of a real world island of Sky. It's made by a solo developer, and we'll get to that in a minute. And it looks really interesting. I love the idea of a survival game set on the British Isles somewhere. And I've even got a bit of Scottish roots in me. The map is pretty unusual shape as well. Obviously, it is based on a real world island. And yeah, you're going to be a Viking that pretty much washes up across the shore after your longboat shipwrecks. So the game is being made by Aurora Games, it is a solo small dev, but you can see how much work they've been putting into the world and some landmarks and points of interest, and it just looks really cool. Obviously being on a real world island, it might not be as fantastical as others, but what I really, really, really dig is just the atmosphere. From huge massive lakes and obviously big massive mountains, to the stars at night, they seem to have this nailed on. Huge plains and lots of rocky outcrops, with a little bit of fauna going into it already. So this guy basically has been working on this solid for months and months and months, huge amount of time put into it every single day. And yeah, I really like the fact that they're really keeping his community or their community going with lots of content showing progress. There isn't any Kickstarter with this. They don't plan to at the moment, although they are accepting donations. Apparently it just costs as much time to get some of the test footage up, organize some of the stuff going on or just to build a Kickstarter when he could be making a game. So I guess they're lucky that they can actually work on this and obviously cost or time isn't a big factor at the moment. Now some things might be placeholders like characters and stuff like that, but it's looking interesting. Now one of my favorite survival games of all time, and I can pretty much say it is the most popular rated survival game on Steam bar Terraria, is of course The Forest. So anything that gives me them kind of vibes, I'm totally down for checking out. So I'm not 100% sure on how much supernatural stuff's gonna be going in it. I presume a bit of obviously Viking mythology. There will be fast travel points, and this is what this altar is all about. And it does say here as well that there's going to be powerful runes and buffs in returns to offerings to the gods. So it will not be a fully fledged survival sim. It is going to have a little bit of gameplay fantasy elements added into it as well. Or at least a typical foods and potions that will give you your character some stats and buffs. But make no mistake, this is a proper survival game. You are going to need food, water, worry about your health and endurance. Cooking and farming will be added to the game as well. And it does look like it's going to be a taming system for creatures. And I'll show you the horses a bit later. If we take a look at the actual Steam page, explore vast open grasslands, towering mountains and dark forests as you fight to gather resources to survive. Build both pre-built buildings and modular structures to help you battle the elements and dangers of the island. Craft a vast array of real world items to harvest resources and protect yourself in the game. An intuitive real world system that makes creating objects feel more natural. So that's good news with the building and I like the combination there if they're going to do that where it could potentially be pre-built stuff like a village or like towns that you could set up like settlements but also you could go ahead and just build the sort of viking lodge that you want 
Website's got a few more details saying that there will be a free tier building system, basic, modular and large scale settlements and it does look like they will be able to trade with or pillage the NPC settlements that you come across as well. So there is going to be NPCs in the game and they've been worked on properly. As I mentioned, it looks like some of them earlier ones were just sort of placeholders, but there is things like adding a blacksmith to a village, but in a hostile environment. So it looks like we'll also be going off against the Gaelic inhabitants as a Viking as well. So it looks like they're going to be the most enemy types that we're going to be fighting against. This character is more just a test based on the author himself, uh, the game dev, just to show off hopefully some of his skills and get better. Horse riding, check. Apparently this has been added to, into the game already, a working test version, 10 weeks ago. Obviously with such a big massive map, you're going to need a little bit more than just certain fast travel points that might take a while to unlock. And yeah, it'd be interesting to see what other kind of creatures you could possibly have as tameable. Is it going to be just cattle, etc.? And of course, you are going to have some longboats. You will be able to use, craft them, and get around the island. So it does say here it's going to be a single-player online PvP and shared split-screen co-op. So there will be single-player story, there will be the online component. And yeah, it's pretty amazing that they're trying to do split-screen co-op as well. Does look like that PvP though won't be added in at launch. That will be something they'll add in later after they've gone into early access. And of course, a big question that a lot of people want to know is, will it come to console even though it's so early on Steam? It's only just been put out. But yeah, apparently that's their idea. They would love to get on something like the Xbox Games Pass, but also maybe bring it to PlayStation 2 in the future. Though none of that is concrete or set just yet. It is going to support keyboard and mouse, but also control support as well. And then, yeah, as you'd expect, more leaning into gameplay again, a unique weather system, got next-gen graphics, and an interconnected ecosystem with large variety of different animals as wolves, deers, rabbits, pigs, and others. And again, judging by the website answers, it looks like certain things will be upgraded over time, like structures and crafted items, rather than endlessly searching for a really rare axe. So, there's the hype, that's the marketing pitch, and my support for an indie. Now though, the realism from this game. What is it really going to offer and can they actually achieve this being a solo developer? I think we've all seen a lot of projects that can be made in Unreal Engine and such like. And I think a lot of game devs now have got the experience where they can set scenes like this to make it look really fantastic. The proof is always in the pudding and how things are going to run when you start actually playing the game. What's the lag and desync going to be like in online? These are the kinds of challenges that all games face especially ones that might go into early access and this is the kind of stuff that we've got to be a little bit more discerning over rather than just be wooed by sexy screenshots i try not to be too negative on up and coming games because the promise is there for sure it's got rich atmosphere the story premise is good a viking fighting off against gaelic forces as he explores a island not his home but yeah, but sometimes the pictures might just be a little bit too good to be true. So it's all about seeing what the game will be like the first chance we actually get and see some proper actual gameplay running. And no pressure, it takes a while for this. We may not see this for like, I would normally expect maybe another 18 months. This is the kind of stuff that I would have expected to see over the last few months for sure. And then hearing of a release date in maybe 2023. But they're pretty sure they're going to be trying to launch this game in the early part of quarter one. So that's pretty much January up to like March in 2022. Obviously early access. I think this game's going to be in there for about a year. They're splitting it up into phases. Phase one will give the players a chance to explore a custom 16 square kilometer map with all the main features implemented. Phase 2 will add the real island of Sky to the game, and Phase 3 will expand on the core mechanics and add new gameplay, for example voxel terrain and a wider variety of buildings, parts, weapons and tools. At the moment, the current state of the ODX version will have pretty much implementations of character, items and buildables, but they will also all be complete before we launch in early access. So we have seen this in other games as well, like Deadside started off with a really small map and they've started expanding it as they've gone on, and to a lesser extent games I don't really want to mention too much, like Day of Dragons also. As I said, I don't want to bring up unfavourable comparisons, it's really hard making a game, and if any game dev can show off this kind of work, looking pretty fantastic in my opinion, then I'm all for supporting it and I probably will now for the next few months. But, caution, as I say, we've seen plenty of games come and go, but yeah, I'm hoping this is definitely going to have more bite to it when it apparently does release early next year 
and yeah it could be something really special so there we go let me know what you think about sky is this going to be something you'd be interested in go and follow devs either on instagram join a discord or give them a like on their youtube channel all three of them links will be in the comment section down below and as i said once we start getting more progress on this i think i'm going to start showing this to you in individual videos as we get more juicy stuff going who knows maybe we can even have a little chat with the developer themselves until next time as always the home of survival i'll see you rat bags later